Hey everyone, it's Vivi and we finally made it. Here's my in-depth breakdown of the latest footage of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the state of play gameplay and the trailer we got before. And yeah, as you can see, this is going to be a long one. I really, really hope you enjoy it and <laughs> with that said, let's dive straight into it. We first take a look at a scene with Rivet and Clank. First off, I would like to give a shout out to Blue Lemon Light on Twitter, who took their time to decipher this mysterious language ever since the gameplay we got in August 2020. This is something I've always been curious about, so thank you so much for this. So right here, we have an infobot with message 000 complete. That detail on Rivet's glove though, this game is looking better and better. Clank's arm is broken, most likely when he landed in Nefarious City. We'll talk a bit more about that scene later on in the video. I just noticed that her hammer is sitting right there in the back. Yes, welcome to the VTNVV channel. If you're new here, then do expect me to go over the most insignificant details ever. Rivet pays close attention to the infobot beeping. While that beep acted as some sort of tracker, boom, enemy force breaks through. In this shot, we realized the cable was attached to an interface of some kind, maybe some sort of charging station. This enemy looks like a giant centipede type of thing, with a nefarious trooper controlling it. From what we can hear in this scene, the trooper was looking for a missing infobot. Missing infobot located. Robotic citizens of the Solana Galaxy. The next thing that happens is something I really tried understanding. We don't know much about Rivet, but I feel this sequence gives us a sort of clue. Notice how she subconsciously goes after the infobot first. She clearly had her eyes on Clank. She saw him fly away, and yet her first instinct was to grab the infobot. This takes me back to one of the info cards Insomniac Games shared on their Twitter, by the way. Her motto, let's call it, the Lombax text, which is the motto I'm talking about, translates to trust no bot. Hmm. Methinks deep down she still has trust issues with robots, despite having Clank with her. You'll get a better clear understanding of what I just said later on in the analysis. You know the trust issues thing. About her robotic arm. No, she wasn't partially transformed into a robot. She actually lost it when she encountered her nefarious at some point in time. She built a new arm herself. This was confirmed on another info card, such as this one. As for how she possibly got her arm ripped off, I mean, that answer is up in the air at this point. As she notices Clank go bye-bye, she realizes she probably made a mistake. She goes, oh no. Just her body language, how she takes the infobot behind her? There's the sense of regret, like, did I really just let Clank get abducted? Her hammer, which is made of terutanium, technically should have been attracted to that magnet field. After all, Ratchet's OmniWrench is also composed of the same material. In Quest for Booty, for example, you can clearly see his wrench reacting to that magnet. She then steps outside, and this is the part where I noticed her model looking a bit different. It's as if they made her look slightly younger. This is if we compare this shot with this clean shot we got a long time ago. This was actually from back in June 2020. Sargasso already looks pretty. Sargasso is confirmed of being an alternate version of the one we know from Tools of Destruction 2007. This is confirmed of being Rivet's home base again, info card. As stated in the previous video, Lombaxes usually live on dry planets, like Velden and the abandoned Fastoon in Tools of Destruction. Rivet appears to be a Lombax who got accustomed to this sort of wet climate in Sargasso. The area which we are in is called Outpost L51, just like Tools of Destruction. The Lombax text translates to Resistance Outpost 4, like I said previously. Uh, well, in the previous video, I mean. We are aware that Rivet is part of a resistance group. As for whether or not everyone is a Lombax in this resistance group is unknown. If that's the case, all Lombaxes, I feel it's something Insomnia Games wouldn't want to spoil. That detail on her scarf, by the way, this game is like candy. Looking at this shot, Sargasso has a lot more structures. Those green cylinders are still there, but as for the other details in the background, they're additional. So something must have caused that giant robot to fall down. Maybe we had some sort of mini boss segment, which the trailer didn't show. Her final blow is her jumping in the air and knocking out that trooper. As she jumps, water splashes off 
from the ground. It just goes to show how swampy of a planet Sargasso really is. For the last shot of this scene, the detail in her hammer is similar to the detail in Clank's eyes. Next, we now jump into the title screen, Rift Apart. Bottom right corner, that red screen right there appears to have eyes of Emperor Nefarious. The letters actually do translate to Emperor. The blue banner, I have no idea. As for the green text, second line says enjoy, but written backwards. You know, reading from right to left. First line from right to left is success. I'm not sure if that's a play on words for the word success. I enjoy success, maybe something like that. As for the blue banner, it's actually another different language. Again, thank you Blue Lemon Light for making us this beautiful table. With the help of Blue Lemon Light, I mean my eyes can only squint so much. The long text apparently reads, Special summer membership fees for IO Spa lowered to 529,225k platinum bolts. Join now. Wow, that does sound expensive. As for platinum bolts, I can't help but wonder if they're referring to the platinum bolts in Going Commando, but I could be overthinking here. As for the bottom banner, this one I think we can decipher as well. The first line says input low energy. Second line says output recharged. What do these even mean or are they even important? I mean, it's just fun deciphering these banners. <laughs> During the part of this footage, creative director Marcus Smith confirms that Rift Apart is a brand new full-length standalone adventure built from the ground up for the PlayStation 5. In other words, this game is exclusive to the PlayStation 5. Before we move on to the next scene, those flying robots appear to be what attacked Rivet and the one who abducted Clank and Sargasso. As for that big red globe, it sticks out like a sore thumb. It could simply be Emperor Nefarious' headquarters. Or that could be a bio-obliterator, I mean after all, going back to this description of the announcement trailer from June 2020, it says that an evil robotic emperor wants to wipe out organic life form. Smith also goes on to confirm that this game's intended audience is for both old-time fans and newcomers. As the camera slowly moves down, we notice a banner on the left. Only syllables I could get out of this while the first line would be Pretium. Premium maybe, but then I'm like, hmm, this could be Latin? I mean, Latin for price is Pretium. I mean, that is definitely a T, not an M, it's not premium. Second line word ends with uh, nulla. That could be Latin for no. We have lots of Megacorp signs. Megacorp originates from going commando, so whatever version we have here is an alternate, remember. What comes to mind when seeing Megacorp, not only weapons, you know the weapons vendor from going commando, but protopets. Speaking of protopets, that screen over there appears to be a mutant protopet. It appears to be marketing something? Originally, we fought a mutant protopet. It was a final boss in Going Commando. Seeing as how Emperor Nefarious wants to wipe out organic life form, maybe he can't wait to turn all protopets into robots. Think about it. Protopets, which are part of Megacorp, would be an easy army for Nefarious. That could explain why there's a bunch of Megacorp screens everywhere. So now our good old fuzzy little Lawbox finds himself in Nefarious City. Notice that reflection of his on the surface of the puddle. Ratchet notices a sheet of paper. He believes that's a Lombax. Well, more like he wonders if that's a Lombax. As for the text on it, the first line, if deciphered correctly, <laughs> it gives Dr. W? Looking at W, it looks to be flipped. What the power of logic tells us. This looks like a wanted poster, so if you read it backwards, right to left, we get RG, imagine, that's W, A, R, D, hmm, me thinks it spells out reward. For some reason, the E was replaced with G. So we have reward, I'd like to believe, and the word wanted, if we read the second line in reverse. Those little tiny letters seem to repeat, long live Emperor Nefarious. Look at that, can't ignore the detail in Ratchet's glove. Whoa! So gameplay begins, as you can see we can knock away any debris that's in our way. Objectives, search for Clank. For story purposes, we technically don't know where we are. Three question marks appear to denote that, but we are technically in Nefarious City since Marcus Smith brings it up later on. As Ratchet starts to walk, he asks civilians if uh, they've seen a little robot with green eyes, red antenna, quite charming. Hmm, I like how Ratchet describes Clank, I like it. We have three posters up on the wall on the left. 
The one with Alambak's logo says game over. Hmm, maybe a poster by Resistance Group, which Rivet is part of? Game over could be a message towards Emperor Nefarious. The other we have Emperor Nefarious's face. As for the text, I'm not sure what it says. There's an unknown character in there. The only thing I can see is... Org? As for the other up top, it reads consume. Con is read backwards. Sume is read left to right. Now looking at the new HUD, this is something huge I noticed <laughs> from the get-go when I saw new gameplay. Starting uh, HP in this gameplay is 20. It has a constant zoom in, zoom out motion effect. Going back to the extended demo, Megalopolis we start at 10. Ratchet currently has his burst pistol in his arsenal. 150 ammo at level 2. In the extended demo from August, level 2 we still had 120 ammo. Perhaps they simply increased it. Level 2 back then, if you would level up your weapon, damage would simply increase. The XP bar for your weapons now sits below the weapon HUD, instead of, you know, around it compared to before. The bolt counter is in the same spot, this time we have a raritanium counter added. Same consume poster on the left. Looking at this illustration, it looks to be Ephemeris, aka the creature collector from All for One. Why would a creature collector be put on there? Is Emperor Nefarious abducting organic life form to then turn them into robots? I mean, anything is possible if this game is going to be full length. I mean, the story is going to be, you know, full length. The poster also appears to clip through the wall. That blue banner over there, the only letters I can see are S O I. A-F-E? soy <laughs> The cables are in the way, so it's no way to tell what it says. That robot logo is actually the logo we have on Big Al's shirt, or the holo cards from the 2016 game. Emperor Nefarious Banner, again? When Ratchet breaks crates, his ears actually fold to a greater extent. It's probably not something new, I mean, if we look at the 2016 game footage, his fuzzy ear physics, I mean, it's still there, but this one, the way it folds, it folds more, I think. <laughs> when Ratchet smacks crates, the sound of his grunt sounds similar to the one in the crack in time. ...separated from his best friend and partner, Clank, and is now in it. Ratchet's cool idol animation actually happens within the span of 5 seconds. In the reimagining, for example, his idol animations used to happen in about 25 seconds to 30 intervals. We got some more banners. The one with number 811 says Leon Super, if read from right to left. The one up top, I tried. Spritium? Murtep's Ula Nula? The Hollow Card logo again. The big banner at the bottom. I mean, let's just not. It's already <laughs> half covered. Pausing right here. Posters we saw before, there's some vertical text in the hologram, all I can read is letters CUNSIT. No word comes to mind with that syllable. And now the unforgivable, the unthinkable. You cannot leave crates lying around, man. Come on. Up the elevator we go. Ratchet mutters, please let there be news around here, and he's about to hear some. We have crates hidden in the rubble on the right. Ratchet's subtle head movement to the right should give people some sort of clue, I believe. As Ratchet turns the bolt crank, we have Ratchet looking creepy. Is he okay? What is he thinking about? He looks very sinister, it's... Uh, I don't know if it's creepy or funny. Looking at uh, the Nefarious City Bazaar, the banner right there, I think it says input low energy, reading right to left. The text right below it, I take it it still says energy. According to Marcus Smith, Emperor Nefarious is a much more capable villain. The lady at the intercom in this section says welcome to the Nefarious City Bazaar. Please remember to thank our marvelous Emperor before, during, and after your purchase. Alright, that's a big ego he has. The Nefarious Statue. Well, the design looks to be Ratchet's Imperial Armor. I came across this on Twitter, by the way, which is actually really interesting. If Ratchet's Imperial Armor is white, then it's possible Emperor Nefarious also has a white color scheme. If that's true, I cannot wait. The screen on the right appears to be an ad for toys. Toys is the word I can decipher here. The word on the left, not so much. Raritanium right up on the roof right there. If I notice Raritanium guys or gold bolts, I'm gonna be pointing it out. <laughs> for sure. Ratchet comes to realization that there are two Nefariouses now. Ratchet prioritizes finding Clank and then Nefarious. Brotherhood. Brothers. Ratchet caring about Clank. It's super sweet. Writing on the floor doesn't seem to be a word, really. 
It's like a bunch of random letters. Stun, W, X, P, and then D. Nothing. Anywho, Ratchet can glide down using his hover boots just like a crack in time. However, this time he's in a squatting position. In this scene, Smith also explains that characters in this dimension are not the same as Ratchet's dimension. As we land in the bazaar, a robot says, hey, a Lombax, implying that these robots are aware of their existence. Always the same as they were in Ratchet and Clank's dimension. The puddle right there with reflection, I mean, I gotta point out these details. I mean, it looks awesome. Raritanium, right there, the one we saw before, but you know, it's closer. You can notice a small screen that goes from purple to red. Emperor. Speaking of alternate characters, we have Mrs. Zircon as the weapons vendor in this game. I take it they went this route because in this dimension, Nefarious has taken over. Well, at least on this planet, you know, robots. Mrs. Zircon made her debut in Into the Nexus. Upon upgrading Zircon to level 3, we get the Zircon family and Mrs. Zircon. That's how she was introduced in that game. Then she was a giant robot boss in the 2016 reimagining. I'm happy to see her as an ally again. The model here for sure is different, the eyes, the necklace especially. Before we proceed, notice the buzz blades right there. It was confirmed that some old weapons would make it into this game, remember. That one appears to be... The Warmonger, I think? The other weapons appear to be new, which we'll get to see in better picture later on in the breakdown. Mrs. Zircon tries to subtly enter Ratchet into her shop, where she mentions that we need to be less conspicuous if we want to buy weapons. And then she mentions the resistance, how it won't last if we basically get caught. Ratchet, the fuzziest he's ever looked in the series, is confused. He's confused about the term resistance. She apologizes because she's new to this whole supposed espionage thing. Then, oh, we hear a robot say release the hostage. And who do we have here? Rivet and Clank being chased by nefarious guards. Rivet is an organic life form, so robots, well at least Nefarious' troopers naturally think that Clank, who is a robot, is being held hostage. Ratchet yells Clank, he gets hit, slips and falls on his back, pause it here, that screen right there, it says secure. I assume it's something along those lines. Rivet uses her burst pistol to get rid of the guards. The holocard logo again, or you know, the design on Al's shirt from the 2016 game. This shot right here, we have the topiary sprinkler icon on screen. The other one, I'm not too sure. Maybe it's the Enforcer. Ratchet asks Miss Zircon if there's a way to get off this planet. Unfortunately, only royal starships are allowed to leave. Anything else, Phantom can help. This place is looking brutal, I mean look at this. A flying car in front of that robot and boom, murder, right on the spot. To find Phantom, we have to follow the beat to Club Nefarious. Before Ratchet leaves, he does a little sort of flirty thing, pointing his finger at uh, Mrs. Zircon. Now for sure Mrs. Zircon recognized Rivet in this scene, right? Since they have to remain conspicuous, she didn't say anything to Ratchet. Question is, does the resistance consist of Lombaxes only? I wonder. As Ratchet heads towards the club, his wrench magically appears in his hand just like that. Reminds me of a spiky-haired fella with his own magical wrench. So yeah, straight up our next mission is to find the club. As we move forward, a robot says, Buy something, mister? I think that's just for the sake of ambiance. Don't think there's another shop we can access here. You know, apart from Miss Zircon. Again, the posters we had before, they're really present everywhere, pretty much. Right here we can hear Nefarious speak, through the intercom. I take it it is our Nefarious stealing the Emperor's spot. This is just a guess, because later on we'll see Nefarious in the Emperor's office. I'm gonna play the scene, and then I'll tell you what I hear. What we can hear him say is, Hello Nefarious City, I just want to let you all know that your Emperor is back. I'm not too sure what he says later, but I hear the word Emperor. That's all I can hear through this loud, hectic city. So as for the Raritanium we saw on the roof, I take it we'll either have to backtrack once we find Clank and make our way up there, or there's probably boxes somewhere around that area which will allow us to walk on and get up there. Right here. I can't help but wonder if that's a grind rail. I mean, skipping crates again, nice. I see you, I see what you did there. Even crates down there, I mean, nits and crannies, people. You gotta explore. So let's continue. We have a club banner that says dance. 
Like Ratchet dancing in this gif. By the way, lately Insomniac Games has been making a bunch of funny gifs, you know, custom animations, being cheeky references to Marvel shows on Disney+. Leon Super Banner again. Sometimes I wonder if those numbers mean anything, or reference anything, really. That banner over there is a character who appears to be meditating? As we head down, we hear Nefarious say, Now that I'm back, I'm starting Operation Dream. I'm not sure what he says later, something like that. Emperor Nefarious Hologram. I don't think that's a live hologram, you know, being recorded alive. It's probably some sort of recording. You can notice him move his head. The bouncers at the door, you know, the guards at the door, well, one of them, I believe, says, everyone is relentless, but quickly gets cut, since we already approached the exit. Uh, the entrance, I mean. Apparently, drinks are half price with your Club Nefarious membership card. The bouncers don't even seem to question Ratchet entering the room. So not every robot on this planet fears or finds organic life form shady or stuff. The bizarre anyway. Already proved that, right? The writing on the wall I can only read stun. The music in the club sounds like a remix of Nefarious Space Station boss battle from a crack in time, or is it just me? I'll play it, maybe you'll hear what I'm <laughs> trying to say. By the way, how do robots even drink is my question. Do they drink oil or something? There's another hologram right there in the back. I really can't tell what it is, but looks to be a creature on four legs or maybe someone standing and holding a sword? Ratchet walking through the club, no, he doesn't start dancing. <laughs> that gif, like I said previously, it's all custom animated. When he enters the club, he wonders where Phantom is. Here, number seven seems to be very prominent in Nefarious City. Could it be a reference to Channel 7? Hello, I'm Kip Darling. And I'm Pepper Fairbanks. Channel 7 in the series was featured in the trailer of Luminal Polis for All for One. On that channel, we had Kip Darling and Pepper Fairbanks. So does that mean we might hear alternate versions of these two in Rift Apart? That'd be interesting. Another nefarious hologram, spotted at the bottom left corner. Once Ratchet finds Phantom, according to Marcus Smith's words, Ratchet learns new moves such as wall running and dash. Wall running is tied to special platforms only. Seems like a magnetic attraction is going on here. Your rift tether appears as you start wall running. The top right banner, what I'm able to read, bolts. That's what I read. And uh, I think join now fees for? The cat banner says MK. We have clearer view of the possible Latin language right there. Duis pretium nala, which translates to no price, no. If you put all three words in Google Translate, you get no homework tour. Tiny words on the top and bottom, let's just not. <laughs> it doesn't really seem to give off a word that makes sense. Letters on that building translate to garden. That creature hologram looks very familiar to me. It looks like this guy from All for One, doesn't it? Skipping crates, are we, huh? We hear a voice in the sequence. Either it's one of those robots, or it's actually Skid as the Phantom. But I'm leaning more towards the robots talking here. <laughs> we'll actually hear the Phantom speak afterwards. If my ears aren't playing tricks on me, we do hear the voice of Skid when dealing with the Phantom. It could be an alternate version of him. The graffiti looks like a Lombax symbol. This adds more weight to the whole resistance made up of Lombaxes only. Okay, fine. At this point, we're all used to crates being skipped. Alright, let's just <laughs> leave it at that. I won't make remarks anymore. As we phantom dash, we have a better look here. Three ratchets appear behind us. As we make our way up, two guards appear and say, love Nefarious. I think that's what I hear. They're demanding civilians to love him. Love Nefarious! Nefarious hologram has text. It's too hard to see though, so let's just scratch that. Oh, that banner again. The words on top, it's just random letters like I said previously. As for the second line, the first word I read is suspensis rutrum. Suspensis is Portuguese for suspend. Rutrum is make up for Latin. I won't read the rest, but you get the idea. 
Not sure if potential energy in this game gives more damage to the wrench. What I mean by potential energy is, if the height is big, like, does the wrench cause more damage? But look here, jumping and whacking enemies from a pretty significant height has a pretty large hitbox and takes one hit to kill two guards. Well, actually, to be technical, they fly off the roof. So maybe that's what caused them to get killed, one hit. I love the hologram trees. This place, I guess, lacks vegetation, so I guess robots like to pretend they have trees around. I've noticed Ratchet's health is at 17. We don't know what caused him to lose 3 health points. The trailer just transitions to, you know, less HP. We wall run again, we use our swing shot. Notice how his wrench gets ghosted as he flips into the air to activate his swing shot from his rift tether. Here we can clearly see the rift tether is being used as a swing shot. Smith explains that wall running and dashing allows for cool traversal combos. Each Rarotanium crate equals to one Rarotanium. We have three crates here, so we get three Rarotanium as a result. Buzz blades appear again from the far right corner. The one next to it, if I make a guess, it's the Shatter Bomb, maybe, or the Topiary Splinkler? Who knows, really? Next is the Nefarious Day Spa. That pink water quickly reminded me of the Obani moons in Up Your Arsenal. Obani Draco in this case, you know, Courtney Gears' hideout. I will play this scene. The Phantom sounds like Skid McMarks, doesn't he? That's him speaking. Nefarious Day Spa. If you can distract these troopers, I'll hack Nefarious' propaganda blimp and give this city a message it'll never forget. Help! Someone! Call my agent! Call my publicist! Actually, don't call either of those people! Call someone who cares about me! Phantom wants us to distract the troopers so that he can hack Nefarious' propaganda blimp to send a message to the city. There's a bolt crank right there. I think it'll activate a bridge to that blimp, maybe. Right on that pedestal, I'm guessing that's Phantom, aka alternate Skid McMarks. That tail of his looks really familiar. He appears to be wearing an X on his back? The letters on the blimp read SEED, with a bunch of numerical values. Looking at this shot, the pink water, I mean, it's not water, right? I take it it's oil? What this reminds me of, you know, robots bathing in oil? Kronk and Zephyr from the comics, along with Clank, bathing in oil. By the way, the comics are canon to the series, and its story takes place after a crack in time. On the far right is a rift, which will allow us to traverse easily using our rift tether. I just realized, the surface here below our feet is carpet. Wet carpet in the rain. Whose idea was this? It seems the pink goo is hazardous, because we notice Ratchet jump across it and dash. When Ratchet swings his wrench, he has a very wide range. We can clearly see him slide towards the enemy and break the nanotech crates at the same time. To push this trooper away, Ratchet swings his wrench three times. On the ground, we have ammo for the new weapon just lying there. It's not inside the crate. Right next to it, we have the burst pistol. You know, ammo for that weapon. Oh, and what do we have here? Ammo capacity for the burst pistol went from 150 to 158. Easy guess would be Rarotanium is the cause of the upgrade, because the weapon is still at level 2. As you can see here, we can dash to evade enemy attacks. Look at Ratchet's look of satisfaction right there. When Ratchet summons his weapons, it has hologram effects. Uh, different options you could put on, and one of them was global time slowdown, which if you enable it, it's a shortcut on the D-pad that'll slow down the game. You can toggle it on and toggle it off whenever you want to. Will trophies be affected by it? They shouldn't be. We, this should be achievable with all the benefits on. Ratchet uses 13 ammo of this weapon, and just like all previous gameplays, ammo also appears under the weapon target. Ratchet then finishes off the enemy with the Enforcer. Aha! So it's the Enforcer icon we saw before lying on the ground. The D-pad quick select, which is confirmed, there you go, it's the Enforcer. This is the third time they changed the Enforcer's icon, by the way. We have the old one from June 2020's pre-alpha, the other one from August 2020's extended gameplay, and now this. I gotta say, I really like this one better because it really screams, hey, this weapon is a blaster. Again, switching weapons in Sonic games decided to go with the hologram effect instead of what we had before, you know, the classic weapon just pops up with cool animation. One ammo of the Enforcer finishes off the trooper on the left. The one on the right still stands 
after two shots of the Enforcer. You can also notice how the Enforcer's target icon is different. The same applies to other weapons. As you waste ammo, the ammo lying around turns from white to yellow, telling you that you need ammo. This game pretty much has lots of visual cues like that. One swing of the wrench finishes off those small robots. Two more shots of Enforcer finishes off the trooper right there. So four or three ammo needed in total when looking at the Enforcer. Comparing the old gameplay from August 2020 to this one, the Enforcer went from 20 ammo to 18 ammo at level 1. As for the experience for our health bar, the gauge moves slightly as the enemy explodes. When you obtain ammo, a golden glow surrounds Ratchet. I love the sparkly nanotech in this game, it's very, very sparkly. Now right here, we use the Rift Tether to do some easy traversal. We break ammo crates and the icon is back to white because our ammo capacity is currently full. As we traverse with the Rift Tether, we one-shot the small fry with our burst pistol and wrench. Now with the adaptive triggers, if you press on it halfway, you can fire accurately, aka one ammo at a time, instead of frantically wasting ammo. Pressing it all the way, you fire repeatedly. If enemies get too overwhelming, I mean look at their AI, how they rush towards you, you can phantom dash backwards as well. This part of the gameplay makes it more clear how weapons gain experience. You don't have to finish off the enemy, necessarily. Simply firing also gives your weapon experience. As for how many ammo the burst pistol takes to handle a trooper, it's hard to count, but my guess would be close to 25 to 30 ammo per trooper. The Enforcer uses 3 to 4 ammo, yeah, like I said before, I think that's about right. Again, the adaptive triggers, pressing halfway you shoot one single barrel. Pressing down all the way you unleash two barrels. When using two shots, however, it takes longer for the weapon to cool down. You can tell by the lights near the trigger, by the way, how many barrels you're outputting. Blue means you can fire. The haptic will make you feel the power of your shot through the controller. About three to four shots of the Enforcer gets rid of this trooper. One thing I've noticed, which is common with these enemies, their color scheme. Hmm, okay, let's see. This could reinforce the theory of Emperor Nefarious having a white metallic body, perhaps with a bit of orange, right? Does it sound too crazy? Another thing right here, before we move to the next section. Is Nefarious screaming Lawrence in the back? I'm gonna play the scene and tell me what you hear. Thing is, I can't hear what he says afterwards. What I do hear him is, I'm always right, and okay, that's enough already. Like I said, I'm gonna play the audio, and perhaps you'd like to tell me what you hear personally. Okay, so players will feel each shot burst from the weapon and connect with enemy. With enemy. A devastating close range attack. Thanks to the. Two shots of this weapon doesn't appear to be enough to deal with this enemy. Anyway, the gameplay takes us back near the bazaar, it transitions quickly. But before we head back to the bazaar, let's go over a short gameplay clip on Twitter shared by Insania Games. This was on May 7th, and this one, if I play it with full audio, we can hear Nefarious again, I'm not too sure what he's saying. All I hear is Emperor protected by all or law. As for this part, what am I doing somewhere else? Something like that? What I notice in this one is you can wall run on these platforms regardless of the directions the arrows point in. You can wall run in reverse to the arrows, basically. Those enemy troops we saw before fire lasers from afar as well, so careful for those ones. Here they call the Rift Tether the Omni Glove. The Omni Glove is the general term for Ratchet's glove, which allows both rift tethering, swing shotting, and uh, from what we've seen, phantom dashing. This is all according to one of the info cards shared on May 7th. The bottom lawback's text translates to Rhino. Yeah, you heard it right, folks. Rhino. <laughs> They're throwing a hint at us, I see. On May 3rd, Insomnia Games had shared more footage of Nefarious City. Actually, the name of the planet itself is Corson 5. Corson 5, by the way, was first hinted at during the extended gameplay demo from August 2020. The bottom Lombax's text translates to Double Trouble. Some of these short gameplay tips either rotate between Pro Tip or Wonder Lost, which means a strong desire to travel. 
So now we head back towards the bazaar. Um, okay, this is weird. Our bolt counter has a negative balance? Is that a glitch? Because I don't recall seeing any negative bolts in our arsenal ever. What I was waiting to see here, while well, Ratchet jumping left and right from wall running. Right? Was I the only one? I was expecting him to jump left and right. I wonder if that actually works. Word on the ground doesn't seem to say much, it's just random letters. After dashing, the wrench reappears like we saw before. Robots appear to be bowing down, worshipping their emperor's sanctuary, I take it? Then it quickly comes to a close as a nefarious juggernaut appears. And yeah, this one too appears to have that same white-orange theme. I'm really starting to believe the emperor will have this color scheme, which would really be cool. The juggernaut appears to be saying staying in line is against the law. Staying in line is against the law! Oh yeah, you can actually notice robots in line. First thing I want to point out. The enemy health bar. We now have a percentage and the name of the actual boss. We're so used to simply seeing the boss icon and not their name. You can break crates as well as ammo crates by dashing through them. About 3-4 shots of the burst pistol at level 2 deals negative 1% damage. It's hard to tell, kinda, because the robot is in the way. Looking at his attack patterns, Target appears on the ground, we gotta be careful and dodge those, dodge those incoming blue falling lasers. It can also shoot purple laser from its belly. Using the Enforcer at level 1, each shot deals negative 2% damage. The distance also plays a factor here. Using the Enforcer from a distance, each shot equals to negative 1% damage. Here, two shots of the burst pistol lowers health by one. Either the Enforcer allowed for quicker damage, or it's really just two shots of the burst pistol needed. This boss has also a different stage. Ratchet gets sucked through a rift, and the locations here I recognize Nefarious City and Megalopolis buildings. As Ratchet lands, he rolls on the ground. Hmm, that enemy appears to be new, or is it an enemy even? Is it a reimagined Sora Beast from Going Commando? The thing with Sora Beast, if I pronounced it correctly, I think, they tend to run towards Ratchet. Here they don't do that if they are Sora Beasts. Maybe the Juggernaut scared them away. But as for the enemy on the right, it doesn't seem to be afraid, and it doesn't care, it comes attacking Ratchet regardless. Smith explains that this area is not just a small one, but it's a whole other level being loaded. As for how far we can travel in this area, it's unknown. This planet also looks new to us. Right there is an alien snapper. Origins, the 2002 game, and the reimagining from 2016, Nebula G34. When these enemies are hit by the Juggernaut, they actually go after the Juggernaut, and they deal negative 2% damage, if I'm not mistaken. When out of ammo, you get a red icon. When firing at the boss, it glows red around its belly. Throwing one shatter bomb equals to negative six damage. The shatter bomb has a newly added targeting system, by the way. Notice the line with the circles. In previous gameplay from August 2020, it wasn't there. We simply had this circular icon that would flash from blue to red when encountering an enemy. Pattern I've noticed with weapons, the less ammo, the more damage they deal to enemies. So far, that's what I've seen. I know I mentioned the D-pad quick select, but the weapons themselves I didn't mention. We have the burst pistol, the enforcer, the shatter bomb, the one below I think is Mr. Fungi. Fungi basically acts as this alternate dimension's zircon as a weapon. There is something in the back right there, but I don't really know what it is, it just caught my eye. Next, we move on to Rivet. The ship Rivet took with Clank at the nefarious bazaar crash lands on Sargasso. Clank without a seatbelt appears to be standing still. Not like they ever wore seatbelts when flying ships, Vivi. Our mission is to reach the Morts, species we've never heard of until Rift Apart. This scene takes place before the hideout, before Clank gets sucked by that giant robot. Rivet clearly indicates that she was going to take him to her hideout first, so yeah, this scene takes place before that. Where are you taking me? I was gonna take you to my hideout, but first I gotta rescue my friends at their gelatonium factory. But first, she wants to rescue her friends the Morts at the gelatonium factory. By the way, Rivet is voiced by Jennifer Hale. She actually, fun fact, voiced, mm, for example, Aurora and Cinderella in Kingdom Hearts. Far left corner appears to be blue crystals, either raritanium in raw form, you know, outside of its crates, or just crystals for this world's aesthetic. But it stands out too much, perhaps it is raritanium. Lots of nits and crannies in this world as well, there's a cave on the left, which I assume we can enter. 
Those toads look similar to the horny toads from Valden in the 2016 version, just with a different color palette. Rivet's HUD looks different than Ratchet's. Maybe there's a setting we can play with in the Accessibilities menu, which we'll see later on. If not, then Rivet has her own unique purple-themed HUD. Rivet also starts with 30 HP compared to Ratchet, who had 20. One shot of the burst pistol kills a toad. Rivet's hammer in action. She jumps into the air, holds her hammer with both hands, and smacks the enemy. A blue trail is left with the hammer when she swings it. As for her ground swing, well it's similar to Ratchet's really, and her hammer appears to have a hologram effect as well. From what I've noticed so far, Rivet and Ratchet have pretty much similar movesets. Make sure to smack the fruit you see lying around, that too gives us bolts. That flower on the left looks familiar. First instance of that was Megalopolis. Due to the rifts, these little guys got sucked in and what they did is they just appeared out of the blue and uh, ate civilians as they appeared. Not sure if they are lethal here, but just keep an eye out. Be careful. Marcus Smith explains that Rift Apart will have classic alternates when looking at planets. Sargasso is one of them. You know, tools of destruction. Looking at this clip from Twitter, May 7th, we have a new planet. To me personally, it doesn't look like we've ever been here before, at least judging from the trailers. First thing that caught my eye, Rivet can also throw and boomerang her hammer back to her. I get a lot of Kratos vibes. Notice how after two swings, she uses her hammer to smack down enemies. Those fish are puffoids. Origin, Poketaru. Rivet in this clip says, Puffoids are kinda cute if they're not trying to null your face open, something like that. Are we looking at either A, Puffoids being sucked through a rift from Poketaru, or B, are we looking at alternate Poketaru with lava? Let's just quickly finish this clip. Yes, arena battles are returning, which we'll look deeper into later on in the video. If you're still here, you are awesome, and <laughs> thank you. I'm hoping you're enjoying the video so far. Alrighty, maybe we can try and guess each area from the original Sargasso. I mean, really, there's maybe one or two places I personally recognize. But do recall, Rift Apart is made from the ground up. This Sargasso is obviously a complete overhaul. Those creatures right there, we saw one of them during the announcement trailer in June. In this scene, unfortunately, we can't hear much of what Rivet or Clank are saying due to the commentary over this clip. All I hear from Rivet is, there's a secret over to my hideout, something like that. Clank in the end says, acetic water. Great. Did we mention how stunning and alive our worlds are? Thanks to the power of the PS5 and the 3D audio, we've been able to create alien planets with an immersive density like never before. Let's check it out. Put two and two together, logic tells us they're trying to figure out how to get across. That robot right there is from Nefarious City. It's the same one at the start of the State of Play gameplay. Compatible 3D audio pops up on screen. Yes, there is 3D audio in Rift Apart. Maybe this is just for trailer purposes, you know, the text pop up on screen. The blue crystal in the far left. Raritanium, maybe? Or just crystals, like I said prior. For some reason, I was hearing Speedos in the scene. <laughs> Rivet wants Speedos? I was like, why? But she says Speedle. Speedtull. Those creatures that walk on acetic water. Like never before. Let's check it out. Speedles, yeah. That's why I'm gonna ride one. Soon as I can get close enough. Objective even says catch a speedle. <laughs> Speedos. Oh, wow, okay. Now we find Mrs. Zircon again. We have the buzz blades again. We have a drill sort of weapon. Interesting. Is that the revolver raider originally planned? for the very first game in 2002? Here's a quote from Corey Stockton, a designer from back in the day at Insania Games. You may recognize this drill from Ratchet & Clank 1. It was held by a large construction worker who gives you a lump of rarutanium. This was originally a weapon called the Revolverator. Ratchet would strike enemies with it and then spin them over his head with the drill bit. Unfortunately, this ended up leaving Ratchet open for attack and also required a lot of resources to pull off, so it was cut. So if they actually went back that far into the series, I mean, that's awesome. That's great. I would love to take the credit, but no, because of the fixes. Now looking at the holograms here, we have a weapon attached to a glove, I believe. So now we have new weapons interface. Our character is on screen. The only instance of something along these lines was all for one. But this is like a very, very AAA modern type of thing. I like it. 
Rivet makes a remark, like, whoa, this wasn't in my account before. Mrs. Zircon explains she added a mutual friend on Nefarious City. Rivet has no idea who she's referring to, judging from her response like, okay. This wasn't what was in my account last time. Oh, that is because I added our mutual friend on Nefarious City. Okay. Ratchet and Rivet in this case, they share the same bank account. And Smith confirms that some old weapons will return. One of them being the Buzzblades, right? The Ricochet, I believe we saw a hologram of it in Nefarious Bazaar. Weapons with a checked box means we already own it. Weapons which are coming soon have a locked icon. L1 and R1 to move from purchases to upgrades, which I take it is the, the Raritanium page. To purchase the weapon, we need to press and hold X until the gauge fills up. Once we exit the vendor after purchasing a new weapon, we get some sparkly effect going on as well as a cute little animation. Perhaps idle animation for weapons. I can't help but wonder if that snowflake icon at the top is a hint at the cryo shot also returning. Cryo shot makes me think back to Full Frontal Assault Online. That weapon was like almost everyone's favorite and it was pretty overpowered. As for the one on the right, I can't tell. Shield charger? <laughs> I'm just making a rough guess. But that'd be great, shield charger. For our right, we have green sparkles. I think it's just water getting splashed. I don't think it's uh, something that tells us where to go. You know, like a visual guide. Because as we move forward, that green thing disappears, so it could just be swamp water splashing. Topiary sprinkler ammo is still at 4 at level 1. Anything that requires us to throw something has an outline for its trajectory. The topiary sprinkler allows us to turn enemies into green plants and then have us use another weapon to finish them off. For example here, as we switch weapons using the d-pad quick select, after using the topiary sprinkler, it takes about 10 bullets to kill them with a burst pistol. If you take too long, enemies transform back to normal. These are maybe redesigned grub snookers from the original Sargasso? Maybe not. I'm just looking at the similarities here. The fact that they both fly and spit green ooze. Killing all these creatures, if I'm not mistaken, is a total of 8. The burst pistol gains about, I'd say, 20% XP dealing with 8 of these guys. As we continue, Rivet asks Clank where that speedle is going. It follows that rift which we're about to enter. That man-eating plant is open and here we can see an eye popping out. These sticks on the ground filled with gelatonium, I think? It could belong to the Morts. Clank now believes that Rivet has a rift tether in her glove which is actually called the Omni Glove, as we discussed previously. Oh, what do we have here? Let's zoom in. That's a gold bolt. As for how we get up there, maybe this game will have some sort of glide mechanic afterwards. Sargasso and Tools, for example, actually had us utilize a glider using the six axis on a PS3 controller. That big robot is spotted again right there. So we break through this rift, a bit unsatisfying because when we pull, it just pops open with no shards flying around. Aha, raritanium in its raw form, alright. So whenever we see blue crystals like this from a distance, we could very well be looking at raritanium. We currently lie in pocket dimension 653199. Breaking the shards yields 3 raritanium. Rivet can use Clank's helipack confirmed. Clank believes this was a result of the Dimensionator's destruction, looking at this place. Does he mean that the Dimensionator got destroyed, literally? Or is he referring to the destruction of dimensions caused by the Dimensionator? Rivet wonders how Clank even comes up with this stuff. I guess she's not used to having a Clank with her. Here we stumble on Maynard, the Mort's helper bot. This bot looks an awfully lot like the scanner minion we got in All for One after each mission completion, doesn't it? That up there appears to be the skeleton of a Gunthor, the same one we saw in Megalopolis in past gameplay. By hitting the nest of the Speetle, we finally get to ride one. Once we hit a nest, it just sits there and waits for us. As for how long they remain there, who knows? But they just stand still, long enough for us to hop on. Alright, before we embark on acetic water, we have what appears to be an armor hologram on the far right. We'll look at armors later on, but that's interesting. Is that like a piece of armor lying around? On the left, the crate's right there, it means we can travel however we want here. In other words, open world exploration. So what we're doing here is we're following Maynard, who Rivet believes is leading them to the Morts. My question here is, can we get off the Speetle? If we can't, smashing all crates looks to be a challenge. Actually, speaking of which, 
On the right, we have another nest, which could imply that we can get off and travel on foot till our heart's content and then resume our travel afterwards. As per usual, make sure to explore every inch of any level. For example here, you got some crates lying around, far bottom right. Here, um, the speed all accelerates. You would think Rivet triggers that move, right? I mean, she does, but she slaps the thing after it accelerates. So now we exit the pocket dimension. There, that green sparkle swamp I was talking about before? So yeah, it, it's just water's being splashed. We can see that gold bolt we saw before, here as well. This area looks quite large, again we have an extra nest right there. I believe we can backtrack, get on a speedle, stop, backtrack and all that. I mean how is one supposed to break all those crates left and right? As the objective states, we're following that robot which will lead us to the morts. Marcus Smith explains that speedle is one way to travel through the acid inside Gasso. What this tells us, perhaps we can eventually glide our way through the swamp in the air. I mean, how else can we get that gold bolt over there? Those plants again, they're opening. It's as if they only show their eyes inside caves. This place also looks familiar, like the layout. In the original version of Sargassa, we had ribs, bones as a tunnel formation. If you don't see the resemblance, well, let's just take a look at this spot in particular. Does it look more familiar to you now? The main difference is obviously how denser this place looks on the PlayStation 5. Again, that same gold bolt with a better view this time. Same centipede large looking robot which we saw before. There's lots of open area on the left and other nests as well. Exploring this game will be so much fun. As we reach our destination, Rivet panics, tells Speedle to stop, stop, stop. We then uh, enter this part right here. Looking at the surroundings, if I compare it to the original Sargasso, instead of bones encasing the cave, we have rocky structures in Rift Apart. So now we reach the Gelatonium Factory and we enter a mini cutscene with the Goons for Less who appear to have wound up in this place. This goon is frustrated thinking they wound up here only to be stopped by these little fuzzballs they call, you know, the morts in this case. These little guys have nine and a half seconds, yeah, nine and a half, not ten seconds, nine and a half to talk and reveal Ratchet and Clank's whereabouts. Good refers to Clank as his robot pal, so yes, they're still looking for Ratchet, not Rivet. Rivet gets angry and we enter gameplay. By the way, Smith confirms that the goons are a rebranded gang, so it's highly likely at this point that they ditched the name Thugs for Less for Goons for Less, maybe due to their failed reputation. The goons are indeed hired by our Nefarious to attack Ratchet and Clank. Pay very close attention here, I'll play the audio. Clank replies to Rivet saying, See, they are looking for Ratchet, I am telling the truth. ...by Dr. Nefarious to attack Ratchet and Clank, and are now also trapped in Rivet's dimension. Seeing as how this takes place before the scene at the start of the gameplay, it could explain why Rivet was hesitant when trying to save Clank. Instead, she turned her head towards the Infobot, so pretty much there's a bit of trust issues between Rivet and Clank, which also takes us back to this info card, trust no bot. After Clank wants her to believe, she simply replies by saying, whatever, I want to save my friends. That deals a lot of damage to your foes. All right, onto the gameplay. The Shatter Bomb at level two now has six ammo instead of eight from the August gameplay at level one. Actually, nine ammo at level one in the pre-alpha footage. To map weapons into the D-pad quick select, you pretty much launch the quick select or the weapons wheel in this case, and press on the arrows on the D-pad to assign a weapon according to your own liking. Throwing a shatter bomb on a goon deals a lot of damage. One shot kill. However, if only hit by a shock wave, they will still stand. That facial animation though. Crates far away over there, remember nits and crannies people. Rivet starts to wonder where these goons are even coming from. Clank believes they simply got lost here due to the rifts appearing. Robomuts appear, they also appear in Megalopolis, but their place of origin in this game remains unknown. These guys made their debut in Metropolis in the 2002 game and reappeared in the reimagining. Throwing a bomb at the gelatonium cylinders causes mass explosion, reaching wide range of attack, which helps us deal with the mutts. Not only that, we can also cause damage to the goon's spaceship. One smack with her hammer deals with the mutt. Just like Ratchet when swinging your hammer, we slide towards the enemy if our distance allows it. One shot of the burst pistol deals with the mutt as well. If you want to gain weapon experience, make sure to shoot at the ship as well. Yep, swinging your hammer surely has a wide range of attack. 
Here, as we fire with the Enforcer, barrels explode. Rest assured, it takes two shots of the Enforcer to deal with a goon, going back to the August gameplay. Both gameplays show the Enforcer at level 2, by the way. Anyway, here you can clearly see the Enforcer still needs two shots to deal with a goon. Notice the rings in the back. One of them, as stated multiple times, has a gold bolt in it. One way or another, we'll glide through those rings at some point in the game. Now ladies and gents, we move on to a new weapon, the Negatron Collider. This weapon takes about 2 seconds for its attack to charge. You know what this reminds me of? The Shock Blaster from Up Your Arsenal, upon reaching level 2. That weapon gave you a charge attack which would give you a more focused blast. One blast of the Negatron Collider is enough to deal with that goon. Considering the adaptive triggers, I take it if you press all the way, you deal even more damage. The burst pistol at level 2 requires about 12 ammo to deal with a goon. Barrels explode here because a goon falls on it. Maynard disappears out of view, I've noticed. These small types of bugs hopefully will get patched out before launch. We have no idea if that big dark portal will lead us somewhere. Marcus Smith ends this part by saying that this is only a small taste of the early gameplay of Rift Apart. Oh, before we move on, the buzz blades. However, we don't see Mrs. Zircon anywhere. We simply have a mort, like they're monitoring that desk or something. I wonder what's happening here. Why would the buzz blades appear here? I don't think it's another weapons vendor. Do we obtain the buzz blades as a gift from the morts, maybe? I'm not too sure to be quite honest with you, because we do see the buzz blades with Mrs. Zircon. Anywho. Now we move on to a new planet. If I'm not mistaken, the look of this place looks to be the area that uh, the Juggernaut sucked us into before. Well, which uh, the Rift sucked us into. That tower especially. It looks really familiar when comparing uh, the uh, Juggernaut uh, sequence. I really, really love Ratchet's skating type of animation given when he first starts his hover boots. Especially the red to blue color transitioning. There's a couple of things to take in here. On the left, we have a ramp. I guess we gain enough momentum to make it across, maybe? Here Smith explains that there's indeed open areas to explore, and he's right. On the right, those large pipes we got some crates lying on top, as well as swing shots right over there. I believe this giant robot over our head is not an enemy, but I think we gotta be careful not to get stomped by it. This planet appears to have lots of white flags lying around. This could maybe help us give direction instead of turning in circles and getting lost. Also, a question for you, do you feel like we can toggle on off the map on screen? You know, from the options menu? What do you think? Because so far we haven't seen a map on screen. We got some blue going on. That, which I'll make a rough guess, could be a teleporter seeing as how this place looks massive. As for the other blue dot over there, it could just be part of the uh, aesthetic. Its shape doesn't seem to indicate raritanium. Yeah. If we take a look at this shot right here, we have a bunch of blue lamppost looking things, so that dot we saw before could simply be that. On the left would be the guest teleporter from before. Now looking deeper into some of the objects lying around, there's vases all over, perhaps with some sort of ancient language written on them. It's a bit hard to see, but there's some sorts of writings on there. We aren't sure how deep or shallow this water is, all we know is that we can hover over it. I take it it's shallow, I mean... Can we even hover over deep water? I wouldn't expect it. As we leap forward with our hover boots, we can spin in the air clockwise one turn. I think that happens when we press jump twice. I wonder what that thing is. Is it a citizen of this place or are my eyes at the point of extinction? Taking a look at Clank's dimensional puzzle, we have what appear to be Clank ghosts entering the switches of the door. The door requires 7 Clanks, but from the looks of it, we have more than 7 Clanks following. There's a feather icon top right corner with number 0 on it and appears to be glowing. I'm trying to guess what it is, but nothing comes to mind because it always sits at 0. Then we move on to glitch challenges. This robot we control is actually called Glitch, according to a primary designer on Twitter. Top left would be Glitch's HP. Top center, other number of nests we have to get rid of, R2, L2 weapon of our choice. We also have indicators on screen directing us towards other nests. Looking at the map design, it appears we can crawl on walls. Our basic attack relies on shooting with electro guns, I take it, you know, those blue little balls. The word gun seems to fit this weapon. Those enemies seem to be our target, while well, they're nests, for that matter. The four missiles hanging above our head might be the Blitz Infector. The attack pattern for this one really reminds me of this from Deadlocked. 
the Land Stalker, which required us to manually press on the controller to charge. Here I don't think we'll have to press a button for the missiles to recharge, we simply have to wait, and then press the button once. I could be wrong though. Three shots of the Blitz Infector seems to destroy the nest. It appears we can lock onto the nest as well. The small fry we can handle with just one shot of our electro gun, I believe. Maybe one missile played a role as well. One goes over their heads, maybe that must have caused damage. By the way, the aesthetic of this place reminds me of the Great Clock a bit from A Crack in Time. We get a cute little wink from Glitch, maybe this happens after we complete this challenge. Next, we move on to Arena Battles. Yup, Arena Battles confirmed, folks. It's fantastic. Audience appears to be random creatures. One, however, seems to be a goon. There you go. We have Mr. Fungi equipped. His attack consists of dropping red orbs nearby surrounding enemies. However, since the Enforcer is being used at the same time, we can't really tell how much damage Mr. Fungi deals. The Enforcer at level 3 has 18 ammo. We had 20 ammo in the August gameplay just comparing the levels. Our health is at 60. 60 I'd say means arena battles will be encountered early on? Based on what that one factor alone. When upgrading HP going back to the August gameplay, we increase health by 10. So 60 shouldn't take too long to achieve. Keep in mind we start with 20 HP in the state of play gameplay. We could perhaps start with 10 or 20 is what I'm trying to say, at least looking at Ratchet. Enemies appear through rifts. Now I wonder who runs this place and why use rifts, or how are they even able to use rifts to their advantage. This one appears to be a space pirate, who seems to attack you with a mine looking ball. There's a yellow orange grid on the right, make sure not to fall off. That over there appears to be a room with people through glass window. I'm really curious to see how arena battles get implemented into the story. Next thing we take a look at is aerial combat with Rivet. We appear to be riding that creature we saw Ratchet ride in all of those previous trailers we had. Notice how Clank is not present with Rivet here. Could it be possible that at this point in time Ratchet and Clank are reunited? Rivet's HP here is at 80 after all. Assuming someone rushed through the story, HP at 80 perhaps could indicate how far we've reached in Rift Apart, to a point where Clank reunites with Ratchet. Here we are dealing with nefarious troopers again, some glow red, others glow blue, we have that centipede uh, big robot again. Rivet so far is only attacking the red guys. Two shots appear to get rid of them. There also appears to be aerial mines. These big ships with domes on them, well, one of them seems to be firing a large yellow laser below. Basically, there's a war going on here. They're trying to cause havoc everywhere. Is it me or are those robots attacking below? Like attacking someone else other than Rivet? The burst pistol appears to be on our HUD, but remains inactive. As for the location, to me it really doesn't look familiar. This could simply be a new planet. Next, Ratchet's happy face when he finds a gold bolt. The area appears to be the area in which we were hoverbooting before. Actually, it's where that footage began. Recognize that pipe and swing shot placement and large robot, yeah. It seems to be in that area, but you know, shot at a different angle. All in all, Ratchet's movements here, I mean, it's an absolute joy. Look at his face, the face he makes, makes me want to get this game even more. Next shot, we have a rift in Nefarious City. Notice the hologram tree right behind it. As we enter, we realize we're in an optional pocket dimension this time. These pocket dimensions are the new versions of like many planets or moons. Looking at a crack in time in particular, some are tied with the story, looking at Rivet's gameplay, and this one is optional. This pocket dimension appears to be a mix of the area we had before, with the gold bolt, and Nefarious City judging from all the banners, the spa bench and the towel. Not just that, this also appears to have sucked in items from Megalopolis. Suitcase, Ratchet Festival balloons, same for Clank, Quark, and now Big Al. What's interesting about Big Al here, he has both arms intact. What I mean to say here, especially for you newcomers, if you haven't played Deadlocked, since Rift Apart is part of the old timeline, you know, post into the Nexus, Big Al is supposed to have one robotic arm. He lost his arm in Deadlocked. So I wonder what's the deal here? Whoever manufactured these balloons maybe made a mistake, or it's probably just a continuity error. The comics actually had that continuity error as well, if I recall. Now, some might say, but Vivi, maybe that's uh, just an alternate Big Al. I mean, since Megalopolis is in our dimension and has festival balloons for Clank and Ratchet, I assume there's one for Big Al. Also, I've noticed that he's wearing the shirt from the reimagining. That hologram right there, I think it's an armor vendor? No, not a vendor, probably a piece of armor we find. 
You'll understand why I keep saying piece of armor. Now as you enter, you can notice the hologram rotate. Now we take a look at some armor in Rift Apart. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Galactic Ranger isn't one I was expecting to see. Hmm, flashbacks. Coming by a pixelizer. Then again, the 2016 game brought in a lot of new folks to the series, so I understand why they decided to include this one. Going back to the latest blog post by Marcus Smith, he did say we can mix and match armor. Now I understand what he meant by that. Here it seems we can mix and match between helmet, chest, and boots. It's not necessarily shown, but it's highly being implied here. What I find very interesting, it says pirate armor right under all the parts of armor. So you're telling me we are dealing with space pirates now? Good pirates in this case? Speaking of pirate, I love the pirate armor. It's my favorite one, the white and orange. It just looks fantastic. The scarf, I like it. Is it possible this scarf has any sort of link to Rivet's scarf? I mean, if pirates are armor vendors of some kind, then perhaps Rivet also got a scarf from pirates? I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing. The Praetorian armor. The term Praetorian takes me back to Alistair Azimuth. He was the face of this elite Lombax warriors group. He called himself the Four Bolt Magistrate. That shape on the helmet's head looks similar to this structure we saw in this area. Are we supposed to believe that Lombaxes live on this planet? What do you think? The robot disguise one is really, really cute. The white armor here, I mean, it just looks so good. We're not used to having white armor in the series, and it's very new to us. And now I understand why the white armor stands out so well. The wasteland gear, I have to admit, it also looks pretty cool. The logo on the helmet looks a bit similar to Space Pirates logo, doesn't it? Just a bit. We got some Q4 spandex thing going on. Captain Starshield. Who would have thought? Captain Starshield was a character with a brief cameo in Deadlocked. He lost his life while at Dread Zone. Fun fact. Captain Starshield also had a mini comic series released online when Deadlocked was still fresh. It was served as a prequel to Deadlocked. Two weeks prior to the events of Deadlocked, to be precise. This comic, released in six episodes, was created by Greg Baldwin and David Gerton from Creature Box, you know, known for plenty of the designs for the Ratchet & Clank series. Now, let's take a look at the collection bonus panel. Three out of three. I take it once we find all three pieces of a certain armor set, we permanently unlock its stat boost. What this means, once these bonuses are unlocked, we can pick whatever armor we want after. Actually, that armor hologram I spoke of we saw a couple times, maybe that tells us there's a piece of armor lying around. Hmm, it does make sense if you think about it. I like to believe we actually have these pieces of armor to find hidden on planets. So yeah, in other words, once a stat boost is unlocked, you know, collecting all pieces of a certain armor, it can be used with any armor of your choice. That's my rough guess, I could be wrong. The fact we're switching armor and nothing seems to budge in the panel tells me that once you unlock a bonus, it stays with you regardless of which armor you mix and match. So at this point, armor acts purely as cosmetic in the end. Speaking of cosmetic, the ones that come with the Digital Deluxe Edition, they're confirmed of being cosmetic. What I find interesting as well, the fact that damage reduction is separated into categories. Pirates, goons, and other creatures. The pirate vendor and fighting pirates, I mean, seems unusual a bit, doesn't it? If we are dealing with pirates, you know, armor vendor, and fighting pirates at the same time, I mean, it seems a bit unusual. But then again, Rusty Pete, you know, Captain Slag's right-hand man, opened a burger place on Luminopolis in All for One, until Nefarious got it destroyed by the light-eating Zagroot. This was according to Kip Darling over on the news. Looking at the menu, we can rotate Ratchet using the right analog stick, and press X to select a slot. Once we select it, I take it we can select what piece of armor we want to mix and match. Commands in the menu are now horizontal. This does appear to be the pause menu. I mean, we got the map, armor, collectibles, weapons, gadgets, and gallery, L1 and R1 to move left, right. If there were to be skill points, where would they be placed? Perhaps under an extras menu? I'd love to see skill points return, actually. I think many of us have been waiting for skill points to return. They were absent in the 2016 game. Skill points pretty much add a layer of extra fun. Another cool thing here, Ratchet is at level 2. Hmm, okay. The last time I recall a level being attached to our character would be All for One. Question is, how would we upgrade our level and what would it represent in All for One? 
Level in that game simply showed how much we've played as the character, in other words, how far we got into the story with the character and weapon upgrades, you know, stats. I feel that the number on the top left corner will reflect how far we are in Rift Apart, in terms of story progression and overall stats. Next we take a look at Photo Mode. In the background we have beautiful Torrin 4, as expected, very dense compared to the one from A Crack in Time. Looking at the UI, top part has different modes. We press square to move from one mode to the other. We are currently on camera mode. Naturally the game tells us which mode comes after character mode. After character mode comes lighting mode and then sticker mode. You can press on the pad on the controller to reset the whole thing. Looking at camera mode quick quick, if you select free mode you can move the camera freely using left analog stick as well as L2 and R2 to move up and down. And yeah as you can see there's lots and lots of features. Looking at the frame selection, the postcard translates to greetings from Megalopolis. As for the Ardolis frame, we have Ardolis written on the top. The planet itself looks quite different compared to the ones from Tools of Destruction. A new planet name! Blizzard Prime. Could this be the planet Ratchet was hoverbooting in? It looks like a very very dry climate of a planet. The text translates to Blizzard Prime, we have Corson 5 aka Nefarious City, we get to see a glimpse of the planet itself at the bottom right corner behind the user interface. We quickly move to lighting mode. If we set customize to on, we can play around with its intensity, ambient light, and that. There's also the option to add extra lights, not too sure how we got here looking at the menu. Did we scroll down? Did we press X on customize? I'm not too sure. But the thing is, it doesn't say X anywhere. Maybe we gotta keep scrolling to the right, and I guess we get this menu under customize? Once you select a light of your choice, you can play around with its settings. In this case, we use a sphere light right here. You can choose its location. Here, for example, they placed one light under rivet and gave it a purple hue. Then you can place more lights till your heart's content. Then we go back to character mode by pressing square. So far we're aware of four different kinds of poses, six facial expressions, and you can also rotate the character. Then we jump into stickers. Reminder, you do get extra stickers if you get the Digital Deluxe Edition. Question remains however, how exactly do we collect stickers in this game? Maybe they might act as the new hollow card system in this game, you know, simply collectibles we have to find. That green sticker says squish. Perhaps it's short for squishies, maybe Emperor Nefarious calls organic life form squish instead of squishies. Wait a minute, that sticker, let's go back. Is that what we saw in this place? Hmm, okay, if it is, then that's a civilian, I think. We also have a glimpse of what Emperor Nefarious will look like. Orange dome? I can imagine him having a white robotic uh, color to match with orange. We have a Clank sticker, we have a Gunthor sticker, we got Glitch. Mr. Fungi, an enemy will encounter somewhere, or it could be that creature we fly with? Yeah, it looks to be it just looking at the head, compared to this shot from August. So our end result, we have course in 5 frame, with a Rivet and Clank sticker, cause you know Clank doesn't belong to Rivet so she pretends Clank is hers. <laughs> we got numbers top and bottom, doesn't really seem to signify anything so far. Next we move on to the settings of the game. By the way, this is our first look at the options menu. We can resume game, restart at the last checkpoint, photo mode, settings, and quit. By clicking on settings, we're introduced to this screen. Visuals, okay. What comes to mind when looking at visuals is the confirmation of 60 FPS. This was confirmed a long time ago, back in August actually, during a weekly Famitsu interview. As for the heads up display, on the right it says you can adjust its settings. And now we dive straight into it. We have the option to adjust waypoints, you know, that icon that shows you where we're going. We have the option to press for it to show. Enable or disabling Rift Tether prompts. By the way, you can reset all to default or simply the one highlighted. We got icon and prompt size. We got the option for center dot. Replace with weapon reticles when using weapons. The dot remains absent during cutscenes. Looking at this frame, by the way, it looks to be Megalopolis. Some sort of celebration going on. UI parallaxing, so if it's off, then the HUD remains on screen throughout your whole gameplay is what I understand. Pause menu elements however, ugh, I don't think I would use this feature. HUD colors, I don't think we can customize the HUD. Like how Rivet's purple and Ratchet's a different color. This is more for miscellaneous things on screen. Emphasis, I will stick to yellow most likely. There is aim arc color, as the description says, it sets the color of the arc indicator for throwables and weapons. 
Then we move to haptic settings. Experiential basically unlocks all the features of the haptic feature. I can imagine people lowering its intensity as a way to preserve battery life in their controller. Next we move to the accessibility menu, gameplay and camera. You can simplify your traversal by assigning only one button to it. They call this simplified traversal. There's camera sensitivity, we also got toggles and assists. Fire mode. Toggle option is especially useful for those who get tired fingers when using their controller for hours. Pretty much Rift Apart is very friendly to disabled players. I think they even wrote an article about this. You can even adjust how the weapon wheel works. The weapon wheel is their new way of saying quick select. You can decide to simply press triangle to switch to your last weapon. I guess this allows for less button multitasking. Off screen ledge guard, okay, is that what we saw in the arena? It says inadvertently falling off or off screen ledges. Maybe it's what we saw in the arena. Hover boot auto pump, okay, so this explains Ratchet's new skating animation when starting your hover boots. I think this could be useful if you're not trying to explore small corners. Next is a visual and contrast option. We have center dot again, motion blur, which I believe is awesome to have. You know, the option to turn it off completely. Depth of field is an interesting one. If set to on, it pretty much blurs objects from a distance. Maybe this might make it harder to discern gold bolts from a distance. I'm not too sure. We even have visibility features. You can set solid colors on objects and characters. Ally shader confirms Captain Quark, appearing at least. There's boss shader as well. Now are we going to fight Nefarious on Megalopolis? Cause this shot right here with his airship, it doesn't look familiar to me. It does look like Megalopolis, but the area, the background, it doesn't look familiar. And yeah, you can add these shades to pretty much anything that's useful to us. Those balloons, I feel we saw them in the optional pocket dimension. Yeah, this appears to be Megalopolis. There still appears to be a festival going on at this point. But the thing is, we have nefarious troopers flying around. So yeah, here's an example of these shaders being applied. For some reason, there's a teddy bear looking stuffed toy over there, and it has a shader on it. Do we have to collect that? It could be a collectible actually, because we do have a collectible section in the pause menu. That weapon hologram, I can't tell what weapon it is. The handle doesn't seem to match the enforcer. I mean, it could simply be just a new weapon of some kind. Now, we enter the arena. Before we do so, our HUD appears ever so slightly. What this tells us, we have to do some sort of walking or exploring first. Rivet's head disappears for a second. Like I said previously, I think all these visual small glitches will get patched. Well, hopefully. Clank also appears to not be seated, <laughs> from what I can see. So we're back on Sargasso against the Grunthor using the Negatron Collider. One shot of its charge equals to negative 7% damage. Notice how the health decreases in small increments. As the beam hits the Grunthor, the weapon gains experience and keeps on gaining slightly more as the beam fires. Grunthors in this game compared to tools, as I mentioned a short while ago. They look more intimidating but less creepy. I think the addition of pupils is what makes them less scary. Torrent 4 again. Bottom right, there appears to be a Vullard. An older one at that. Another one right over there, if I'm not mistaken. They did live on Torrent 4 in the Kraken time. The banner on the top left says Robo. Mrs. Zircon is spotted right there as well. The grind rails of Torrent 4, we got a gold bolt uh, over there, and I really love the way it looks detailed. And it shines. I like it. As we collect it, we get a rather big pop up on screen. You can perhaps adjust the size of this display in settings. At the bottom left, we got a rift. Some entrances appear to be sealed off, or it could just be the visuals, then again, there's a broken rail right over there. Perhaps as we unlock more rail sections, those entrances unlock. Or that one is broken on purpose. I mean, once we jump off, we could be using our rift tether to traverse to another area. There's some crates lying on top, so now I start to wonder how do we get up there. The grind boots look closer to its original model from 2002. New area in Megalopolis with Ratchet and Clank. This takes place before Rivet and Clank meet because one thing. Clank still has his arm intact. And look who we have up there. That looks to be the area we saw in the extended gameplay from August. Nefarious's ship seems to be emitting a lot of dimensional energy, call it. This was because Ratchet used his burst pistol to shoot the Dimensionator in this scene from August. Now you might wonder, why are we here? In this area in particular, aren't we supposed to be up there from the footage we saw in August? Two things. Maybe this is a separate optional area. Or what we saw in August, the way it was cut 
and put together was for demo purposes. But what I'm leaning more towards is this is just an extra area. Next, I take it this is a pocket dimension, looking at all those meteors floating around and the purple-pink theme of this place. These platforms, I think, are Magna Boots platforms. If so, this confirms Magna Boots returning. I think we'll have to walk down. There's a large floating crystal on the left. In the trailer footage before the State of Play 1, we get to see Rivet smack that crystal, which as a result, will revert or fix this place. We'll take a look at that very soon. Now I'm starting to wonder if that is Ephemeris, the creature collector. Probably not. We do have a poster showing the Ephemeris, but it's probably not the Ephemeris looking at it. There's some large blue shards in the back. I take it it's aesthetic reasons. I, I feel like it's too large for it to be Rotanium. We also got some floating crates right there, perhaps intentional? Back to Nefarious City. We have our Phantom in the back, jumping from wall to wall. I feel Ratchet will do the same in this game. Phantom appears to be running away from enemy attacks. Yup, looks more and more like alternate skid to me. I think this is when we're trying to get to Phantom, and he will eventually teach us how to wall run using our Omni Glove. That lighting over there makes it seem like it's daylight in Nefarious City, but when we reposition the camera, it doesn't look that way. The trooper, I think, says resistance? Resistance! <laughs> they seem to recognize that the resistance is made up of Lombaxes? Perhaps? I already love this planet. It looks creepy, it's dark, it's somber, there's lightning. This could perhaps be Blizzard Prime, actually. Going back to the icon, the dark color surrounding the planet, and the planet's color, it could be it. This planet appears to have mining areas. Clank is absent. Rivet is solo here. This could take place after Clank reunited with Ratchet. Maybe we're following that robot. To me, it seems like that robot is moving. Because as we walk forward, I think it does move, actually. The State of Play trailer ends with another shot of Megalopolis. We hang off a taxi driver. I'm getting lots of all-for-one vibes here. Nothing too out of the ordinary in this scene. I believe that's a rift right there, but we still wonder when this exactly takes place in Megalopolis. And with that question in mind, we reach the end of the State of Play breakdown. Now is the time to move on to the trailer which was showcased before the State of Play gameplay. Again, if you're still watching, you are incredible, thank you. Trailer begins with the ESRB rating. In-game purchases is simply for upgrading to the digital deluxe in-game. That's all there is to it. So we start in Megalopolis, what seems to be a festival of some kind. It's peaceful, well, peaceful in a way where there's no trouble brewing yet, the dimensions are intact and all. At the bottom corner is Captain Quark. We can easily miss him at first glance, but there he is. Junior's almost launch party! This festival does, in fact, have a lot of Quark theme surrounding it. We got festival balloons for Ratchet and Clank, Big Al, I think that's his spiky hair right there, and Quark. That red carpet looks like that shot we had in the settings menu. It could be that as we walk forward, we find an elevator and we find ourselves here. You know, a cutscene place. This whole shot right here, we now believe Megalopolis is part of our dimension. Because there's a festival going on, everything's intact, right? Question is, is this a rebranded Megapolis from Going Commando? Megalopolis sounds like Megapolis, but Megalopolis has an extra syllable in it. So this right here is a mix of gameplay and cinematic footage. This doesn't look pre-rendered to me. This appears to be real-time footage. That's how good this game looks. Clay hops off Ratchet, he walks towards the center. Just looking at the surroundings here, it does match the center. But then we quickly skip to our duo unveiling the Dimensionator. This is where we ask ourselves this question. Does this mean Clank fixed the Dimensionator in Into the Nexus? Into the Nexus shows Clank take the Dimensionator in the end, and it looked really different back then. The original design for it required one to wear the device on their head and shout the place they wanted to travel to. Well, shout the place they wanted a rift to open to. But it appears someone redesigned it completely, but who? Whether it was Clank or not, we aren't sure. And for some reason, the device was held secure in Megalopolis? So a festival happens, there's a camera on a tripod, I believe, this is being covered on the news. Are they celebrating the launch of the redesigned Dimensionator for some reason? But why? Who brought it here? One question after another, right? 
As they step foot near the center, Nefarious shows up and snatches the Dimensionator. At this point, we should be aware that this is our Nefarious and not Emperor Nefarious. Nefarious must have been hiding this whole time, waiting for the perfect moment to snatch the Dimensionator away from the duo. Nefarious wasn't present in this shot in the beginning, it's likely he just quickly appeared afterwards. Don't confuse that purple smoke in the back for Rifts, like I said everything is still intact. Nefarious hasn't touched the Dimensionator yet. Rifts haven't appeared, alright? We then have this scene. Clank wondering what Nefarious even wants. The way they put this trailer together, it makes it seem like this scene takes place right after. But it doesn't really make sense if you think about it. First thing to notice, Clank appears to be on Ratchet's back again. He was on his feet before. Also, in this shot, his airship seems to be undamaged. But in this shot where Nefarious says we're going to a dimension where I always win, his airship is damaged. I also wonder how he remains afloat here. Comparing his ship here to the one from August, the claw served as a hover, but here the claw was just used as a claw. So how is he floating? Is he attached to those metallic ropes? It doesn't seem that way. Anyway, I don't think that's too important. What's important to consider here, what is the sequence of events in Megalopolis? Right off the bat. This scene where Nefarious wants to go to a dimension he always wins, it happens after all the events of Megalopolis, at least in my personal opinion. Let me try and piece this timeline together as neatly as possible. So event number one, let's call it. Nefarious appears and steals the Dimensionator. This causes rifts to appear and cause havoc to the city. Because of random rifts appearing, Ratchet and Clank get sucked into one, and then find themselves back in Megalopolis, hence Ratchet saying we're back, which makes a lot more sense now looking back at the August gameplay. On PS5, I'm at you 11, man. I'm not there yet. One day. So. Less than a month. We're we're closing in. No, no, it's great. Yeah. Cannot wait. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. Beat yourself up. Oh, what do you want, Nefarious? Yes. <laughs> By the time we reach this part, again the footage from August, Nefarious has been looking for us and is confident in getting rid of us. So there must have been something in between this scene and this scene. Cause Nefarious just said I've been looking everywhere for you. Ratchet blasts the Dimensionator, his airship goes flying and crash lands. Now here's where the trailer purposes aspect comes into play. This scene in the new trailer, pay attention to the plant faces. In the old footage, when trying to reach Nefarious, we get sucked into a vortex, well, a rift. But if I pause it here, we notice similar plants, right? It's the same vase. At least I think so. So this scene I feel technically happens after we find a nefarious who crash landed. But for trailer purposes, looking back at the August footage, they cut straight to our duo getting sucked and losing Clank. You might say, okay, but what about this part from the State of Play trailer? When does this happen? Why are we in this area and not there? Because when Nefarious crash landed, we made our way towards that area right afterwards. But the thing is, there's the possibility of secret areas, guys. A planet doesn't have to be linear all the time. So this right here from the state of play could simply be hidden areas or optional areas we can explore. So once we finally reach this area, Nefarious reveals his new plan. To find a dimension where he always wins. It's as if this idea came to mind last minute. Oh, let me find a dimension where I always win. And the question is, how does he know that there's another successful Nefarious out there? Once he opens a rift, this scene, I believe this is when we'll get sucked in, you know, go through planets like what we saw in August and then lose Clank. I think that's how the events technically are supposed to happen. So yeah, this scene with Nefarious wanting to go to another dimension plays out. Plants are still there, so it does look like the same area. And we get sucked in. Clank loses Ratchet and Ratchet eventually will find himself in Nefarious City. The city in which Nefarious always wins. We have a shot of Nefarious City. We talked to plenty about this place. Mrs. Zircon who we meet, which we already covered. We have the same scene as before. Ratchet finds a wanted poster of a Lombax. Now this shot right here is a shot from Rivet's perspective. Insomniac Games thought it'd be a more interesting idea to have Clank lose his arm. Originally, both arms were intact. Clank asks, who are you? The female Lombax reveals her name to be Rivet, and tells Clank we're going on a ride. This shot right here, I'm getting a lot of Tools of Destruction box cover art uh, vibe. Here's the interesting thing. She appears to have the same thing as Ratchet. 
you know, that magnetic uh, thing on her back. Coincidence, or is there more to this story? She happens to find a robot that easily sticks to her back. It's as if she's done this before. The thing about her having trust issues with robots, hmm, let me think. Could it be possible? She had her own robot pal, who then later betrayed her for Nefarious, perhaps? Causing her to lose her arm as well. By the way, she did lose her arm due to Nefarious, her Nefarious. I think I said that somewhere in the video, I just said it just in case I'm repeating myself. Or are we simply looking at Lombaxes having this on their backs as a common thing? If we check out a Lombax Society concept from the 15th anniversary art book, this was concepts for Into the Nexus, some Lombaxes appear to have things hanging on their backs. It could just be that, and coincidentally, she easily thought Clank would stick to her back. Rivet grabs Clank like she owns him? Clank is like, wait, I have to find my friend. She already gave off the I don't care who you are, you're coming with me vibe. Again, this ties to her trust issues, perhaps. As for here, Rivet can also wall run and use her swing shot with her robotic arm. I just noticed this little cool summoning animation given to Rivet's armor. Looking at the skybox, it seems to be close to the one we have in the arena, doesn't it? Plus, these look to be like large floating podiums. My guess is we're outside the arena. I love the two backflips she does as we launch our rift tether. There's actually another rift right up top. Another shot of Sargasso, however, this looks to be an earlier build I think because the raritanium on the left seems to be purple here instead of blue. We then enter I think another pocket dimension, the ship on the left I believe is an enemy ship, but abandoned. I believe we'll see that kind of ship again later on. There's a big Mr. Zircon in the center, there's also Baby Zircons. Baby Zircon was part of the Zircon family when upgrading Zircon at level 3 and into the Nexus. There is Mrs. Zircon Vendor right there. If this is a pocket dimension, then we have our first civilian right there. Similar to the ones we saw in Megalopolis. There's that big purple-pink crystal from before, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see its function very soon. Torrent 4 again. It appears we can walk down that ramp on the right. Miss Zircon right there. Nothing out of the ordinary, so we can move on. We are about to see what these big crystals are for. By the way, remember what I said? About those blue big shards before being rarutinium, yeah, scratch that. It's just crystals, large crystals. When these crystals are not hit, these ones, the floating ones, they're white. When they're hit, they turn pink purple, and it's like it reverses time to restore the area to its original form. When this place is restored, we notice lava. This could be the same place we saw in this small clip shared by Insomniac Games. In other words, you know, alternate Pokitaru, let's say. I'm just going off the lava here and the rocky structures. That big ball over there is just part of the world's structure. It's not ephemeris, it's not. I also noticed once uh, we smack this crystal, more appear in the back. I can count two. Well, three if we count this one as well. Maybe for the sake of simplicity, we can revert back to the broken uh, version from multiple areas instead of making a large detour to find this one crystal. I don't think it's a scenario where some areas need fixing. Hitting the crystal actually restores the whole planet from the looks of it. Next, we move on to what seems to look like Emperor Nefarious's office. The female robot butler seems to confuse our Nefarious with her Emperor. Our Nefarious is thrilled of being called Emperor. The voice of the butler, by the way, is that Nicole Sullivan I hear. It sounds like Luna's voice from Size Matters. Let me play a comparison. Emperor Nefarious, you have... Returned. Yes! Emperor! I will contact you when the delivery is completed. Luna, out. We see a shot of the camera. It even says camera, but uh, read from right to left. If we assume this camera is not recording live, then this scene must take place after Ratchet realizes that Clank gets taken away. Ratchet did also say to find Clank first, then Nefarious. The thing that happened is he didn't find Clank, he got stranded on Nefarious City and unintentionally walks in on Nefarious. He spots Clank on one of the cameras and has a sad look on his face. Just like a crack in time when Ratchet says Clank, Nefarious realizes Ratchet is behind him. In a crack in time, he threw a bomb which smashed Nefarious's dome. But here he shushes Nefarious, it's really funny. <laughs> 
and smacks him. I won't be surprised if that causes a new crack on his dome, after possibly gotten it fixed by, I guess, Lawrence? Here I wonder, where even is Lawrence? All I remember is Marcus Smith saying the butler did it for months ago during a Games Radar interview. Whatever reference he was trying to make, it could have simply been a reference to this female butler for all we know. But I mean, you can't have our Nefarious without our Lawrence. Question also remains, where is the Emperor? Did our Nefarious do something to him? Did he send him off to another dimension? I feel Nefarious is doing all this bad guy stuff routine simply out of pure thrill. Even boredom, perhaps. Nefarious, he's grown as a character, we can't forget that. Especially after teaming up with us in All for One. That more friendly side of him from All for One, I believe, can still be brought back if the Emperor turns out to be the big bad guy. Maybe steals the Dimensionator, like I said in the past, from our Nefarious, doesn't know how to use it, and really causes mass mass destruction to the Dimensions. In that case, our Nefarious would have no choice but to team up with us. I have a feeling our Nefarious won't be the big bad, despite what the game is trying to show us so far. After all, we have Nefarious troops who belong to the Emperor, to be technical. They're following us everywhere. And if the color scheme is anything to go by, then orange and white is what Emperor Nefarious will look like. So yeah, like I was just saying, the Emperor will most likely be the big bad, and we'll have to deal with him in the end. Another shot of Torin 4. There's a swing shot on the far left, crates on the right, which tells us we'll have to explore that area on foot eventually. The grind rails appears to start from that area, or ends. Next, we go back to Rivet's base. At first, many thought this was Torin 4. It turned out to be Sargasso. Rivet explains to Clank that our Nefarious looks a lot like ours and evil too. Marcus Smith did say Emperor Nefarious is a much more capable villain, remember? Then she says, and that Lombax. Who else could she be referring to other than Ratchet? This is where the whole theory comes in of alternate Azimuth having a daughter, Rivet being his daughter. In this dimension, Alistair could still be alive, or dead. Instead, in this version, Caden might be alive. If let's say Alistair is already dead in this dimension, it could be possible that Caden remained alive. She might feel like that uh, our Lombax Ratchet, if she saw him somehow, resembles Caden. Caden, who did not have a child in this dimension, Instead, it was Alistair having Rivet. And yes, for how she found out about Ratchet, other than Clank always bringing up his friend, remains unknown. As she wonders who Ratchet is, we get this scene Ratchet running away from the guards. I feel he's inside Emperor Nefarious' headquarters. I love the aerobatic moves he's got when he enters the vehicle. Zooming in on that sticker, it translates to passcode. How convenient for Ratchet. As for the monitor, we don't really see it as a whole. The text at the bottom says Emperor Nefarious. I bet you there's a lucky M bomb here. Those red towers out there seem to match the towers we have at the start of the State of Play. So this area is perhaps around there somewhere. Ah, okay, that pirate looking ship we saw before, it's right there in Torin 4. Seeing as how that large robot is attacking those ships tells us those are enemy ships. Why have a giant robot if they're going to destroy friendly ships, right? Unless they were hacked. That big one which seems dead with an axe in its chest went from yellow to black, if we go back to the August uh, trailer. Assuming we're around the same area, it's possible they took inspiration from Azimuth's hideout from a crack in time, you know, that large robot. Clank worries if they don't get the Dimensionator, they might lose every dimension. There's something shining from a distance, it's either a gold bolt or something else. The large robot then spots Rivet and Clank. Perhaps it thinks we're enemies? So we gotta dodge that big laser, hop on some grind rails, and be careful not to get stopped. You might think we have to jump right on the grind rails if we zoom in, but he's about to stomp. Maybe we'll fall and land somewhere. At least the pirates are taken care of! Please, focus on the grinding. As for the purple one, that could be that big shard which will maybe eventually smack? I mean, nothing else comes to mind looking at it. Back to Ratchet Hoverbooting, on the same planet as before. This could maybe be a race? Look, we have zero HUD in this trailer. So this right here, if it is a race of some sort, we'll see numbers and laps when the game launches. However, if we had races, Marcus Smith, I think he would have mentioned it? <laughs> Let's keep it simple, right? So what I'm leaning more towards is simply traversal. Some rifts will act as boosts. Wait, hold up, hold that thought. This rift acts as a shortcut to sort of speak. When we enter, we get to teleport to another section of the area. Notice how the tree leaves cut right at the edge of the rift, so yeah, it does look like a portal. That ring under us is what actually gives us a boost. 
There's even another rift far left corner, that too probably transport us to another area. If not, I mean there's no road left, we're just gonna fall to our death. Maybe that's another boost pad over there. I do notice some green light, but it's a bit hard to see cause Ratchet is in the way. Now we're back to the planet Rivet uh, restored previously. These guys appear to be the goons for less with a new power up. For some reason I thought these guys were nethers due to the pink purple near them. The purple thing is, I think, an effect of our new shock type of weapon? The weapon's shape looks similar to this hologram we saw in Nefarious Bazaar. It could be that. When dealing with a goon in close proximity, it takes about 2-3 shots here with our shock pistol shock weapon. The other one, if close enough to the other, gets shocked. Next, this I feel happens after Clank gets taken. Notice how Clank is not on her back. We're chasing after the robot riding a speedel. Here we're in Ardolis. Looks to be the same exact spot from the Tools of Destruction version of Ardolis. But you know, it's alternate Ardolis, I mean talk about transformation. Ratchet here is using I believe this weapon from the hologram. The handle at least seems to match it. There's a rift on the top right corner, we can use that to traverse to that area up there. Now unfortunately we don't know if Clank's arm got fixed, if of course this takes place after reuniting with Clank. We don't see his arm, the way Ratchet's positioned. This weapon, since it's purple, it drops purple bullets compared to the burst pistol which is green. I love these little attentions to detail. Here it seems like the same area as before, you know, hover boots. Especially the vases. They're much much larger here, I noticed. You prefer offense. There's some crates up above, so we gotta make our way up there somehow. Ratchet deals with a trooper using the ricochet weapon. The way it works, you launch an orb, hits the enemy, and then finishes them off with a bunch of green lasers. Is that a small house with a door and a cute little window? It looks like it. And of course, Ratchet here is solo, and still is looking for Clank, I take it. The trailer ends with Rivet finishing off the enemy, like we saw at the beginning of the State of Play gameplay. So to finish off the video, folks, here's a funny little gift for ya. This is a reference to the this is fine meme. And look, <laughs> it's funny, L Ratchet's expression, he's like done. Looking at the areas in the back, this one looks to be new, I don't recognize that enemy at all. We have the arena, we have Sargasso, we have a lot of uh, crowd noise in the background. This to me looks like we're sitting inside the dome at the arena. By the way, this is the extended clip from their Facebook page. I said GIF, they shared a GIF version on their Twitter. But yeah, we also have the area with the big Zircon. And this clip, which is about 27 seconds on Facebook, it just loops, it repeats. So yeah, uh, we, uh, we, we're done. Wow, okay. If you watch the whole thing, I do okay. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> I'm like out of words uh, right now. Uh, it was a long one. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, your own theories, if there's stuff you don't agree with, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I've been Vivi and yeah, this is it. I will keep you guys updated as much as I can when it comes to Rift Apart, until launch at least, and yeah, I'll stop talking. <laughs> I've been Vivi and thank you, thank you. Until next time.